beef and wheat built the Texas Panhandle. The dust coming off these cattle feed yards actually is very large dust that settles close to the property. The management of feed yard dust, in our opinion, is more focused on preventing nuisance conditions to our neighbors and community. Uh, dust seems to be the number one nuisance issue around here. Odor would come in a close second. Uh, Amarillo is in the middle of the, the biggest cattle feeding area in the United States and one of the biggest cattle feeding areas in the world. The feed yards uh, range in size from 1,000, 2,000 head, upwards to the largest uh, feed yards in the area being about 100,000 head one-time capacity. All of the communities out here in the Texas Panhandle uh, were built on the basis of cattle feeding and ranching. Uh, so cattle feeding uh, is an important component not only of the economy but also of the society. When you look at the economic uh, impact of the cattle feeding industry in the region of Texas, Oklahoma, and New Mexico, we feed about 7 million fed cattle every year, which represents approximately 30% of the nation's fed cattle production. So it's a, it's a, it is a big part of the regional economy and the local economy. The main complaint we deal with out here on air quality is, is nuisance dust, and uh, nuisance odor is associated with that. It's difficult from day to day to tell which is the more important one. Uh, obviously, during the hottest part of the summer, uh, the driest part of the summer, dust is the major issue, but dust carries odor with it. So, uh, dust and odor nuisance. Dealing with cattle feed yards in the Panhill of Texas, the, the dust issue primarily is a local concern. Um, we tend to have uh, very good air quality in general in this part of the state, and the PM, the dust coming off these cattle feed yards, actually is very large dust that settles close to the property, and so really it's driven by nuisance issues. We seem to have a, a fairly good relationship where feed yard managers try to make sure that they're doing the appropriate level of control to work with the neighbors and make sure that they're minimizing the undesired dust coming off of the yard. And one of the best things that we've been able to do and had the most success with is working with those neighbors, listening to their concerns, and then being responsive, and responsive in a timely fashion. We try to provide science-based uh, approaches, uh, but it comes down to willingness to adopt and willingness to, to give one another uh, a chance to adopt. And so we've had more success getting around a kitchen table and, and, and working out uh, understanding. We'll work with that neighbor, explain the situation to them, but then also indicate to them and, and inform them on what we are trying to do. When nuisance conditions exist for neighbors and communities, uh, our regulators hear about it, the cattle feeders hear about it, and we end up hearing about it. It's our, one of our main jobs out here is to help uh, the cattle feeding industry and uh, the population centers to, to coexist peacefully and to get along well. The moisture is at a premium here. Uh, we get very little rainfall in the fall, uh, very little snow in the wintertime. We're dealing with a very dynamic system. Uh, we work entirely with what Mother Nature deals us in terms of climatic conditions. We feed cattle and cattle are always taking in feed and then excreting it out the back end. And it's that material, the manure that comes out the back end of the animals that ends up being our feedlot dust. The three main drivers for the evening dust event are cattle activity, dry manure, and an uh, evening inversion uh, in the atmosphere right at the ground level. Those three things combine to create what you might call a perfect storm. In the late afternoon and evening, uh, the manure on the surface of the feedlot is at its driest for the entire day. That seems to be about the same time that the animals get up and start to move around quite a bit. As the wind speeds drop and the sun angle goes down, the atmosphere gets more stable and any pollution that's released at ground level tends to stay at ground level. It's very similar to what people in uh, some areas of the country call a high pressure dome or a lid or an inversion. We get those frequently during the summertime, especially in the evenings. So those three things come together uh, to give us what we know as our evening dust peak.
there are some things that can be done by shaping of the yards and doing certain practices that, that give a little more forgiveness so that you get good runoff and you don't have puddling. Uh, though, that way you can try to avoid having a condition where you have both dusty conditions because there's a dry part of the, of the lot and odorous conditions because you have air, other areas where water's standing. Uh, number one is a good manure harvesting program, uh, a good aggressive manure harvesting program that leaves behind a, a well-drained corral surface. And then those that have water available can, can use water uh, through sprinkler systems or through water trucks uh, as an additional measure to suppress the dust. We've tried things like uh, concentrating the cattle on smaller areas and using the water that they naturally excrete to suppress the dust. It's been hard to measure a significant effect on dust emissions using that technique. There has been a little bit of work on adjusting the feeding schedule in feed yards, uh, but that ends up being a management issue. Uh, you have to hire additional people to do it, and we still are not able to measure the differences uh, very significantly. Uh, we can also look at things like mulches, surface mulches to retain moisture, uh, emulsions, things that we can put through a sprinkler system to, to make the water last longer. But all of those I would consider second tier approaches. We want first of all uh, to deal with manure harvesting uh, practices and then uh, a wise application of water. Cost effectiveness is a big deal to the cattle feeders. Um, when we ask cattle feeders to harvest their manure more frequently, we're asking them to burn additional diesel fuel, we're asking them to burn additional labor costs. When we ask them to, to use water applications to suppress dust, we're asking them to burn natural gas to pump groundwater into above ground holding tanks. So we're always asking them to spend money for dust control. Uh, we've seen a, a lot of challenge related to maintain, trying to maintain a profit. Uh, high, high feeder cattle, high cost of corn, and marginal fed cattle prices have made it very difficult to have break-even operations each time we feed a pen of cattle. So when, with those kind of conditions, uh, it makes it very hard uh, to spend additional funds on new infrastructure and new systems. And one of the other challenges that is faced is not only the cost of pumping water in many cases, but also the availability of quality water to be put on the feed yard for dust suppression uh, becomes costly and uh, in many cases becoming less and less available. So practices that can be used that don't require a lot of inputs are certainly advisable and will help this industry maintain its economic viability in these tough times. In the past decade, we've spent almost all of our resources trying to identify better ways of addressing air quality issues. We've done that through research, we've done it through education and outreach programs. There's always been a focus here at, at the association on environmental management, uh, making sure that we make decisions on good sound science, and trying to help our uh, feed yard managers also be the best environmental managers that they can be. Over a million dollars per year right now is what we're spending, not only on dust, but also ammonia and odor and hydrogen sulfide. Uh, dust seems to be the number one nuisance issue around here. Uh, odor would come in a close second. And uh, we spend most of, our, uh, most of our resources on researching those two. Uh, the recent interest in biomass energy and biofuels and renewable energy sources has put a premium on the value of manure for things like uh, gasification and anaerobic digestion. And what we found is that the very same practices that lead to dust control and odor control and nuisance prevention also result in a higher quality manure product, not only for biomass energy and biofuels, but also for fertilizer. Uh, we're asking cattle feed yards to spend a lot of money, and we owe it to them uh, to show that the money they're investing in dust control actually works. The researchers are out there uh, trying to identify solutions for us. You know, we're, we're relying on their creative minds uh, to come up with new ideas for, our, for the feed yards to experiment with and to implement in hopes that we'll continue to make progress in the feed yard dust management. They are aware that their industry affects people's livelihoods and their quality of life. Uh, it is in their interest to make sure that they uh, remain good neighbors and retain good neighbors.